In this video, we're going to be talking about using grass and hay as a mulch to grow food. In the past three years, we've been using a lot more cut grass and hay in our vegetable garden to help us with growing food. Now the thing about grass, especially where we are, where it's quite a wet climate, we just get so much of it. So it's almost like uh, autumn time when you have all the autumnal leaves. It's like the rest of the time when it's not winter, you have so much grass. And the thing is, if you've got an abundance of a particular resource, then it makes complete sense to make the most of it and utilize it to help you out with what you're trying to do. So that's exactly what we're doing through using grass. So if you live in suburbia, then likelihood is that there's gonna be a lot of people mowing their lawns. So all you need to do is ask them for their lawn clippings and even just volunteer to pick them up yourself because they are such an abundant resource around there and the thing is you can get them for free. And when it comes to mulching, what you wanna do is place a two inch or five to six centimeter layer. You can make the layer thicker, but that's kind of a good minimum to aim for. On our small holding, we do have a lot of land, so that means a lot of grass. So at the moment, we're currently scything our orchard and that's gonna create so much hay for us. Now, there is something about hay which people like to bring up a lot. And I saw it in a few comments in the growing potatoes a lazy way, where we simply placed potatoes on the ground and just covered it with a thick layer of hay. And people are saying that you're basically just putting down grass seed, and that is true. We have a wildflower hay meadow and when we have hay we like to cut it after all the wildflowers have seeded and in that case there is quite a lot of seed but the idea behind mulch and going towards no dig gardening system is that you're just going to continue piling it on over the year. Yes hay can give you a lot of weeds and it can give you a lot of grass to deal with but that's basically only if you take the hay off to leave bare soil and then all the grass will go through. Because the idea with adopting a mulch system is that over the year you're going to continue placing some more layers of mulch. And especially for something quite dense, such as hay, especially after it's rained, it's literally gonna smother the ground so the weeds will find it very difficult to go through. And should any weeds happen to come through, then it's so easy to pull out by hand or you can simply place another thick layer over the top. And gradually, as you build the layers, the hay at the bottom is going to start to break down and it's gonna release those nutrients. And there's an interesting discussion where you're looking at, should I mulch with straw or should I mulch with hay? And yeah, straw has its benefits because you might not get weeds because they've already taken the wheat off it. But the thing about hay, is that usually, especially from a wildfire hay meadow or just organically farmed uh, meadow, there's other things growing apart from grass, such as clover. So there actually tends to be more nutrients in hay. So if you want fertile soil, then what I'd recommend you do is mulch with hay. And I can speak from experience because this is the third year now where we're using hay and we haven't seen any noticeable differences in weeds. In fact, by mulching more, we are building more soil and we're also weeding less, so it's actually saving time. And if you happen to have a lot of hay and you want to create a new area of garden, then here's a great way to create a no-dig garden. All you need to do is to take off the top two to three inches, so around six to seven centimeters of soil, and you place a really thick layer of hay on top. And then with the soil that you've taken off, you put that back on to the hay, and then over time this will break down, and then you can plant into this, and then as the plants grow, you'll then mulch around them with hay. And if you live in a dry climate, then mulching is a fantastic way to reduce the need to water because it acts as insulation where it retains the moisture within the soil. So that's a really good benefit of it. 
One thing we did to demonstrate the effectiveness of growing in hay bales was that we kind of copied the straw bale gardening idea where you planted directly into hay bales and we found two things. We found that if you left a hay bale out for a whole growing season and then planted the next season, this would be the most effective thing to do. And the second thing is, we didn't have to weed the squash plants once. It was so simple as putting out a bale of hay, leaving it there for a year, and then the following growing season, putting in a bit of compost, planting the plant, and then leaving it, and all we had to do was harvest it at the end of the year. And that's a prime example that you can very easily grow a lot of food for hardly any effort at all. I hope this video has inspired you a bit and answered all your questions to do with growing food using grass and hay as a mulch. And I do appreciate that some of you may not have enough access to these materials. So a bit later on in the year, I'm gonna go out to my local community, my local town, and I'm gonna show you all kinds of different materials that you can collect from shops and businesses, which you can use as a mulch instead. And if you have any further questions or comments regarding growing food and mulch, then don't hesitate to ask me down below in the comment section. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Goodbye.